Hey, we're here in the studio, and look who we got. I'm back. What's up, dude? Welcome, much. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm not editing that out. He's... What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Hook One Pod. Hey, we're here in the studio, and look who we got. I'm back. What's up, dude? Nothing much. Welcome back. <laughs> I'm not editing that out. He's staying there. Welcome back. It looks like he's ready to be back. So anyway, guys, we got an awesome show for you planned today. We're talking Lake Huron. Uh, me and Louie were talking about it. We've talked to it uh, about it with a few of our other friends around here at the shop, and we just think un- Lake Huron is so underrated. It's underrated. It's underappreciated. You've got all the other great lakes that fish so well. You've got Lake Michigan, Lake Superior, Lake Erie, the walleye capital. Lake Ontario's got giant kings in it. And then there's just Lake Huron. It's kind of forgotten. It's forgotten, but there are so many fish in that lake, and they're so unpressured. Yeah, and so that this episode kind of just stemmed from what really happened last week. Uh, if any of us, If any of you guys follow us on the socials, we were out on Lake Huron vertical jigging. Um, for lake trout, we got into a real nice mess of fish. Louie, what'd you do? Caught a 40 and a half incher. 40 inches. 40 and a half inches, somewhere in there. Um, landed an absolute mega out there, vertical jigging. It was unbelievable. You, I was my first time out there, and your third time? Third time, I believe. Twice so, before we went. Yeah, exactly. So... Really, we haven't spent enough time out there to, to really figure that fishery out and break it down. Uh, and we were already met with a really good day of fishing. We caught nine fish, uh, lost two. Well, you lost two. I, the first two, actually. It was. It was. And then finally hooked into that third one on a spoon. I had a bucktail on because well, that's what we were using up in the UP. So I, I had all the confidence in the world on this thing. And you had three bites before I even got touched. I was like, give me the Give me the spoon. Give me the spoon. The spoon is just so underrated. It just flutters and it just like we were using <laughs> we were using we were using we weren't using like a regular jigging spoon. We were using a, a big old Swedish pimple. The number nine, uh what is it? An ounce and five eighths. Ounce and five eighths. So it's yeah. a it's a different it's a different weight for one. Uh and then the other thing is the Swedish pimples are a little bit fatter. So like he was saying, I feel like they got that really good flutter aggressive jig up and you let it flutter down and you can feel those fish like the line is slack and you can feel those fish just hammer it on the way down yeah i mean they do not hold back when they when they hit those things so not only did we get out on that fishery um earlier this well i guess when this comes out it'll be last week but um the national walleye tour was up in the sioux and i know a lot of those guys ran out and probably fished lake huron uh a 65 pound bag was the winner. I think I was just looking at the um, notes on my phone. I think eight bags over 40 pounds. So like an insane walleye fishery going on right now. And I know all like um, the Michigan walleye tour was just up there too, uh, up on Lake Huron. So it, it's been producing some quality walleyes. Yeah. I mean, there's no doubt. It obviously takes time to find them. Like when you look at the stats, there's definitely a big difference between weights. Oh, but yeah. when you find them, it's like you're, you're teeing off on giants and it's big fish. And these guys are marking them on live sonar, like 35, 40 feet. They're marking these fish on live sonar. And it's, it's just pretty incredible to see that fishery start to take off. Cause we talk Lake Huron's got everything that you need to be a solid fishery. Uh, it's got colder water, not as cold as Lake Superior. It's got clean water. No way is it cleaner than Lake Superior. It's, it's close. It has its days where it's, I mean, when we were out there, it was so blue. You could see those fish way down there coming up. Um, but it, it, it's no different than Lake Superior. And it's still got a lot of its its natural shoreline structure, natural drop-offs. And then there's a ton of wrecks out in Lake Huron. There's a lot of freighters and ships that have gone down out there um, that those fish can hold on. Yeah, there's so much structure that, I mean, they could be anywhere. That's the problem. But once you find them, it seems like there's just massive schools of fish. Like there's perch. There's walleye where there's perch. There's smallmouth out there. There's big lake trout. I mean, there's everything out and, there. And, you know, that was funny. When we were talking about this show, we were talking about, you know, the trolling in the thumb's been good. Big steelhead, a lot of lake trout. Some kings have started to show yeah. them back up. 
Um, for those of you that don't know, like our king fishery was decimated years ago when we lost a bunch of alewives. So our, our kings haven't really been back yet, but the king fishing starting to come back. The guys up in like Roger City and up towards Mackinac City, they're finally starting to get into a lot of kings. And then we didn't even talk about it, but dude, the smallmouth, like oh my god, the guy, the the bat, the elite series couldn't get up there. And next week, I'm pretty sure our show is going to be on Lake St. Clair, and we're going to break down that whole thing that those guys did. Um, but the elite series, they couldn't even really get up there because Saturday and Sunday the river was closed for the powerboat races. Otherwise, we would have seen some big bags wade up north. Well, Friday, Matt Robertson actually made it uh, up to Lake Huron, and he dropped like. 19 and a half pounds or something like that mm-hmm. and he had like 12 in the lake the day before and there's some giant there's some giant smallmouth that live like the northern side of the river and in, in lower end of lake huron oh, Gi- yeah. they're tough to fish they're very tough to fish but man there's i mean there's there's a few six pounders out there it's not necessarily a dime a dozen there's there's a few yeah he was saying that if he caught every fish he flipped at he would have had like 30 pounds yeah no that doubt. was that was interesting. We'll talk about that a lot. Like I said, next week we're going to get Joe on the show and, and talk a little bit about how you li- like, they were just live target. It it was unbelievable. Live target, live yeah. scope, whatever. Uh, Hummingbird live. They were on it. Um, but that's not what we were doing. No, that's not what we were doing in Lake Huron because it's too damn deep. Yeah. <laughs> we're fishing anywhere from 110 to like 140 foot of water. Uh, and a lot of it was, was really graphing. So we made it out there and fished. I don't know, maybe four hours, maybe like we were on a time crunch, but it was something that we had to do. Like we, we just had to get out there. So put all this work and effort into it. You get out there and you fish four hours and then you're fishing for four hours, but really we're just driving around with our 2d sonar for four hours, at least two, two and a half hours. I mean, we drove around at least half, if not more than that. Yeah. I mean, the problem with lake trout rigging is there's so much water to cover yeah. on the structure you're fishing. So we're you're fishing a steep drop off between 110 to 120 feet of water. I mean, they could be anywhere in that drop off. Oh yeah. And if you drop down and there's no fish on you, they're they're way too lazy to come swim over to you to actually chase your bait. And it's tough because like that 40 incher was a fish that we were just drifting and we didn't mark and. We talked about it a lot with Chase. Shameless plug to our two episodes ago with Chase talking about Lake Superior Lake Trout. Um, how about that? We're a Lake Trout show. Yeah, I mean, it's turning into it at this point. When they're coming in 40 inches at a time, I'm taking it. Yeah, I mean, how? why wouldn't you? But these fish, like, a lot of them, you can just mark with your 2D. And, and when you're that deep, you're, you have quite a wide cone. It's covering a lot of ground. Uh, and you can mark a lot of the fish that are down there. But sometimes you like, there's a lot of fish that are sitting in that structure, whether it's the rocks or the drop off itself or the humps. So many fish are sitting in that structure that like your big one, we didn't mark my big one up at the rock. We didn't mark. So it's tough, but you, de- you want to find at least a few fish. Usually you can find a few fish off bottom that make it worth, you know, all right, let's try here. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that was kind of the thing. Like, you could kind of tell when there was fish on bottom, but you weren't really sure if it was a rock or a patch of, like, weeds that kind of grew up for a second. Yep. But it was like once you'd see two or three off bottom, you'd drop down, and when you'd lift your spoon way up, it was like five, six, seven of them were chasing it. You're like, holy shit. Like, they're just stuck to bottom. And a lot of the times we'd work that area too. Like we had a, we had a decent wind out there, so we let the wind push us a little bit. Now we were moving a little faster than we wanted to, so we we're using our trolling motor to kind of control us. Because, and I think it would have been different if we were using bucktails or like a, a big jig and a swim bait to get down there. Um, but the the spoons were fluttering a little bit. It took them a little bit longer to work. So we were on the trolling motor, but just slowly covering water. And then when the marks disappeared and there there wasn't much sign of life, you'd reel up and move to the next spot. And there'd be times where we'd reel up. And watch something chase us up off the bottom. Yeah. Open your bail, drop it right back down. Yeah, there was a couple times where I lifted up and I'd see like a little mark swimming up on the grass. And I looked at Pete and I'm like, dude, it's at like 50 feet. And then I'd stop my spoon, rip it once or twice hard. And it was like, Donk! and you're like, oh, damn, wasn't you're, ready for that one. Yeah, or you'd be letting line out. Your bail would be open and you knew you weren't on the bottom and your line would just start bowing and you just lock up the bail real. Like, that's what I noticed about those fish. I think every single fish bit on the fall. Every single I don't one. think any of them like pinned it to the bottom. Nope. 
Uh, I don't think any of them, like they all, they all bit on the way down. They're the more I fish for them, the more I realize they're really, really lazy fish. Like they want it to come up and they want it to f- like flutter right into their mouth. You know what's weird about that too is like they, they I I agree with you, but at the same time, like you'll catch fish that are are 40, 50, 60 feet off the bottom. They'll yeah. follow you all the way up. So as much as they want it to like be right there in their face, sometimes you have to like just slowly reel or quick yeah. reel pause, quick reel pause. They'll follow you up like 50, 60 feet and then crush it. And it ends yeah. up being a good fish. And it's like, what are you doing? What? Yeah. Like it just, I don't know. Some sometimes it can be really weird. It's yeah. There's like a fine line. Like there's fish that won't that won't move. Like if it's no. five feet off bottom, it is five feet off bottom all day. You are mm-hmm. not you're not convincing that fish to chase your spoon, chase your bucktail. It doesn't matter what you throw. He is just five feet off bottom enjoying life. They're sleeping. Yeah, they're sleeping. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> they're what they're just doing. down there chilling. Like, you know what I mean? And, but then there's a school of fish. You go over them, and every single one of them will chase it 30 feet under the boat. Yep. And the beauty of it is, like, the beauty of the whole thing is, like, we were out there fishing this spot, and we we found it on the graph, and we're like, this looks like a good spot. You go out there, and you hit it and catch fish. There were, like, three or four other spots within five miles that looked exactly like that one. Like, there's just so much natural structure and stuff out there. And it's like, dude, that's kind of the... Like, I guess the catch 22 of it, no pun intended, but you've got this spot that you know is, whoa, you got this spot that you know is holding fish. You got the spot that we know has big ones, yet that hump over there or that drop off over there or that wreck over there might be holding more fish or bigger fish. And it's like, it's just, you need, there's just, I don't know, man, it's, I'm kind of at a loss for words just because it's going to take so much time to break it down. And it's so fresh. Like we yeah. just went out a few days ago and, and. And I don't know, man, I just, it, to, to find a fishery like that and to find a bite like that was epic. Yeah, I mean, that it, it's addicting. Like, you could, we could take exactly what we were doing and hit every other, like, spot similar to that, and I could almost promise we'd catch fish. Same thing, like, when they, yeah. when they're, when they're, like, on something, they're on something across the entire lake. So if they're patterned to say shipwrecks, they're on shipwrecks across the entire lake. You find a 75 foot drop off, they're on a 75 foot drop off through the out the entire lake. There's just so many of them, and like that's what that's why I say like they're underappreciated is because so many of these guys are like oh there's too many lake trout in our system. We got too many lake trout. DNR needs equipment. They're fun. Like they're not oh, yeah. fun. They are not fun to catch on a 300 400 foot copper. No, I no. agree. I, they're not fun to catch on a 10 color. I agree. But they are extremely fun to get out there with light tackle. I mean, you were using when you caught yours fish, you were using a seven foot, seven foot or seven six? Seven two, seven three. And it was basically a medium heavy with a three thousand on it. Yeah, it wasn't even a medium heavy. It was a medium. It was a seven three medium, two broad <laughs> with a twenty five hundred reel with twenty pound braid. Yeah. Exactly, and that we had to chase the fish down. I wonder why. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have to upgrade after this, but well, I mean, we've that been fish told, we've op- been told for so long that those fish are, and we've seen those fish get caught trolling. So, like, you know, you know that those big lake trout are out there. You've seen them get caught trolling, and everybody's like, "Ah, oh, they're not." You know, Lake Huron's only got the small lake trout. It's only got the small lake trout. That's why I drove ten hours up north to go catch them. Now, granted, Standard Rock is its own thing, and I think you'll appreciate it for what it is, but it's just unbelievable to, to, to be able to have that fishery like right here. I mean, to to drive what 45 minutes from where we met to, you could drive four hours and you're going to catch a lake trout all the way up. I mean, you can, you could drive to a launch 15 minutes away and go catch lake trout. Not on the river, but on the lake. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there are spots even like as far as like lower Lake Huron, Port Huron area, there's spots that, I mean, they're not super far. They're not close. I know guys who catch lake trout in 30 feet of water year round. So if you, when you think about it, you could go, you could go cast from the harbor and catch lake trout. They are everywhere. Yeah. And a lot of times that's what they do in the fall. Like yeah. A lot of the time. See, it, it, and it all depends too. Like this year, we've had a lot of north winds, which means Lake Huron's had a lot of cold water coming down. 
So I think that's why a lot of this Lake Huron fishery is so good right now. I think that's why the steelhead are sitting around. I think that's why a lot of the lake trout are still around is that cold water is there and it doesn't push them up into the northern Lake Huron. Yep. But still, I mean, those fish are going to be here. A majority of those fish are going to be here. If they're, if they're on that structure, it's like we talked about with Chase. A lot of those fish that are born on the rock stay on the rock. A lot of these fish that are born on the structure are going to stay out on the structure. There's enough food for them. There's, there's plenty of fish out there to continue to, to breed and do your thing. So it's like, it's perfect conditions. Yeah. I mean, you can tell those fish don't go very far. No, they, you wouldn't think they'll be sitting up and down a piece of structure for their whole life, basically. And they just get to learn it. And the more you fish the same spots, the more you're like, okay. Mm-hmm. This is where the smaller ones sit. The bigger ones tend to sit over here. There's a lot more fish over here. There's yep. a couple over here, but they're usually more aggressive in this spot. But you, you kind of figure it out. And I think the fish kind of know that as well. Oh, 100%. 110%. And it's just interesting to me because it seems like the fishing every year is getting better. Now, is it because they're, do we have more bait? Do we, are they starting to like, that whole zebra mussel and goby thing, like I know it's been a while still, and they say that they've kind of acclimated, but at the same time, I mean, I think it's ever changing. Like, right. like if you're used to something for so long, years and years and years and years, it's not just gonna. I, they're gonna accom- they're, they'll accommodate it right away. They'll get used to it real quick. But I do think that, like, I don't know, man. It just seems like every year it's getting better. Like, Honestly, there's still really tough fishing. Like, I'm not saying Lake Huron is this unbelievably unbelievable fishery like there's definitely still tough fishing and there's really good guides out there that are on these fish often we know a few yeah um and it is tough fishing but the opportunities that are out there are just like they're not known they're not really talked about no it's and honestly the gobies seem like they're helping the size of the fish but dude the wake trout we kept a couple last time we went out to smoke a couple Mm -hmm. and they were chocked full of gobies like this big it, like you could not good fit food a, source you could not fit another goby in one of their stomachs and how about the goby the goby is a good food source from six inches of water if there's a rock there's a goby, there's a goby. like six inches of water to 140 feet as deep as we fish so far and we'll probably fish deeper the more times we go out there and it's like probably find gobies and i'm like the goby is a warrior Goby is just <laughs> sacrificing itself out there. Good. Keep doing it, Gobies. Keep doing your thing, Gobies. Um, and then on top of that, so you talk about the lake trout, you talk about the steelhead, like all that sort of fun stuff. And then it's like these guys are up north, the the pros are up north cracking giant bags. I mean, a lot of those bags are the biggest bags that I've seen for their whole for their tournament so far. Yeah. And it's, it was what, July when it happened? And it was the very last weekend in July. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can't keep track of my days. It it was crazy to see them bring like North Dakota and like Minnesota techniques up here and just <laughs> bank them. F bomb, <laughs> F bomb, sixty six pounds. I don't know how to ble- I don't know how to bleep them out yet. Sixty six <laughs> pounds. Yes, yeah, in six, two days. Sixty six pounds, like two th- i mean you're averaging 33 pounds a day which is just like it's like come on man like that's om- i mean almost seven pounds of fish <laughs> that's almost almost a seven pounder that's 33 pounds a day so you start doing math here mm-hmm. and that was so that's up in the sioux and then like we talked to our friends that are over in alpina and stuff uh and like dude they're cracking mega bags like they're having their local tournaments and their derby nights and they're cracking mega bags and it's like it, it's just going to show are you still doing math yeah seven times five is 35 so <laughs> You're almost at seven pounds of fish. <laughs> You're pretty dang close. Six and a half pounds. Whoa, man. I did the math for you. That's why I said almost seven pounds a piece. I wasn't sure. Seven is 35 and it's 33. It's almost. I was just double checking. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, Louie doesn't take care of any of the ordering. Don't worry. No, no, I don't. So, <laughs> so. It's like you're out there cracking mega bags of walleyes, and you got to assume the walleyes are feeding on that same forage, right? They're you're finding them. I'm assuming we'll find out coming up. They do all that behind the scenes stuff, and it's it's really fun to watch to see how these guys are breaking down the water and stuff. But I'm assuming they're fishing isolated structure and isolated rock piles, and they're fishing with like there's. I would bet it's gobies. 
Uh, I know the tournament was won on a rip and wrap. So you know they're using gla- or a jig and wrap? Yeah, jig and wrap. Jig and wrap. Jig and wrap. I, I think Stupid. Max said on the press conference or whatever that hit the main forage was uh, baby perch and gobies. So, yep. I mean, pretty much the same as everywhere else. And what is Lake Huron? I mean, we're sitting here talking about how good of a fishery Lake Huron is in walleye fishing. We're talking about all this, and I haven't even mentioned Saginaw Bay in the whole thing. I know. But it's like that that's what Lake Huron is. It's gobies and small perch. There's gobies and small perch everywhere. So all these big fish um that are colder water species, right? Yeah. They they are just teeing off on these fish. And it's so cool to see this fishery going because like I said, I just think a lot of the times it's kind of forgotten about, kind of tossed aside. Uh and it's good. It's and really good. It's like surprisingly good. good. And it all happened, like all this stuff lines up and happens this week. And it was or last week and and it's just like we got to talk about it it was like one of those things we had to talk not only to yeah. tell our story about what we found lake trout fishing but then you hear about the walleye fishery our friends that are out there guiding are, are i mean they're laying into giant steelheads out there like it's just really cool to be a part of we're we're blessed man i mean how many times can i say that i mean could you imagine a, an nwd tournament in saginaw bay during the spring whoa no i couldn't because there's it, you know, that's another thing we talk about, like Lake Erie's is factory and it, and it is, I'm not taking anything away from Lake Erie. So all you guys that fish Lake Erie, please don't be mad at me when I say this, but like, look at what Saginaw Bay is doing right now. Their limits, eight fish a person, 13 inches or bigger. Like they're just, they're just trying to get guys to keep walleyes. And then on top of that, every single fall in every single spring, a fish from 12 to 14 pounds, like multiple fish from 12 to 14 pounds are coming out of that. Like that's insane. The yeah. thing with the tournament out of Saginaw Bay that would be interesting is to see like where these guys go. Like I can't wait to see really how far they ran and how many guys ran away, how many guys left the St. Mary's River and went into um, Lake Huron. I'm willing to bet it was a majority of them, um, but we'll, time will tell. Yeah, I mean, obviously some of them are going to run as far as they possibly can to get away from everybody, but I'm sure guys fish within five miles of the boat ramp. And Oh, yeah. Well, the St. Mary's River, the St. Mary's River is a really good fishery, but it's a tough fishery from, I've never personally got to fish it, but from everyone that I've talked to, um, it, it's a good fishery, but it's a tough fishery. Lake Huron, you can like, they can really power fish it with casting baits. Like they're casting jigs and paddle tails or the, um, let me get this right. The jig and wrap. Um, some guys fish the rip and wrap up there, but a lot of times you're, you're fishing too deep. So you want something that's really weighted to get you down there. Yeah. What was the Berkeley bait? The chicken the, wrap, the, the um, oh my God, the Johnny Darter. Yeah, the Johnny. How do you forget Darter, a name like that? The John Hoyer Johnny Darter. Johnny Darter and the Champ Swimmers. They used a lot of paddle tails yeah. up there. Those guys. Um, and I mean they produce. And it was interesting because they were mentioning how they were fishing weeds. So I'd like to really see if if um, if they were fishing those isolated rock piles or if they were fishing the weeds. Um, because both of those are at your disposal. You know what I mean? I mean, yeah, they're both. Lake Huron is one big rock pile, it seems like, when it, you try and find any structure besides rock. Yeah, and that's like what people were saying. They're like, you know, were you were you on an isolated spot or were you like on a reef or were you on that? Well, if you look at Lake Huron, there's a reef that goes basically all the way from the northern side of Port Huron, which is the lowest end of Lake Huron, and it goes all the way up around the thumb. So, like, we were just fishing isolated spots that were, you know, away from the reef, but you could fish the whole reef itself. You could fish any of those isolated spots. There's so many like mountains, I would say, underwater that'll go from like 180, 190 up to whatever, 110, 90 foot. You can find you can find some shallow water. This mic is making a weird noise. I don't hear Did it. you hear that? Well, I mean, I heard it when you bumped it. Oh. Anyway. So it's like there's there's just so much to fish there. And like any great lake, there's so much dead water. Oh, I mean, I couldn't even imagine trying to break down Lake Huron for walleye in July. Well, we did it for, I mean, the lake trout stuff. The lake trout stuff all came about because our friend. I mean, our friends went out there and did it, uh, and they had spots, but we didn't fish those waypoints. We we sat there and we looked at basically kind of what they were fishing on, on Navionics. No, we actually compared waypoints, and we were about 12 miles apart. Yeah. Yeah, which is crazy because we thought we were fishing the same spot. 
yeah, 12 miles apart in Lake Huron, and we thought we were. And you look in between those two spots, and it's like, oh, that looks good. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that looks good. But how much time do you have? Yeah. You know what I, I mean? mean? It's like, you might have all the time in the world. You're hooked. I still like to chase walleye and bass, and I like doing my thing around here. Well, I mean, it's like we said, you could launch from Port Huron all the way up to Rogers City, and you're going to catch a lake trout. Anywhere Mackinac in City. Go all the yeah. way up. Go yeah. all the way up. You're going to catch a lake trout anywhere in between if you're fishing the right stuff. Yeah, and it's it's just it's just really cool to be a part of it right now, and it's like the whole fishing community, um, we're so connected with, uh, with facebook and instagram and all the stuff like that and it's just cool to hear about all these different fisheries going um but it's really fun to be able to break down one in our own backyard and like i said we gotta uh next week i really want to break down lake st Clair and everything that's going on out there because there's two major bass tournaments out there yeah and it's like dude we're sitting right in the middle of both of these like just booming fisheries like they're coming up they're not they're not going down they're coming up and that's that's big time yeah i mean if you want to catch bass you drive half hour south yep. and then drive a half hour north and you're in lake huron and you can catch god walleye. knows what i mean the walleye are going up there right now a lot of the a lot of those fish from the river pushed up there into our favorite spots yeah i mean and then, walleye there's a ton of steelhead we put a beat down on the steelhead two weeks ago that was farther up the thumb yeah uh yes but it's not far no, it's not. It's like forty five minutes. Yeah. But, but I mean there But there's the there's the steelhead. There's obviously the lake trout we did that you can I mean you can do that. I mean it's not anywhere. like it's not like you have to even drive far from the boat ramp. For what? Lake trout. No. Well, like it depends. It depends what launch you launch at. The farther the farther north you go, the deeper you can get out until you get into like that Saginaw Bay and then when you get above it you can get out deeper again. Yeah, but I mean, like Port Huron, you do have to drive a little ways because you gotta, you gotta well, yeah, get I to a hundred plus foot. But once you're there, yeah, there's fish. Yeah. I can promise you, there's fish. Yeah, yeah, and then kings are starting to show up. So you're trolling, you're catching steelhead kings. The coho haven't even left yet. The coho bite has been unbelievable. So is this the year. Atlantics, dude. Dude, they're just hanging out with each other. <sighs> the Atlantics are I. They're odd, dude. I would love to keep... I love learning about these Atlantics. These Atlantics are, are mysterious, mysterious creatures. Dude, is it illegal to tag one? Put an Apple Air tag, dude. I mean, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that. I think, there's, I think there's an article you could probably find right here on your phone. And uh, you're going to have the DNR knocking at the door, dude. We are not doing that. <laughs> Someone catches it and they're like, hey, I found your Air tag. I'll be like, oh, thanks. Throw but back. it would be interesting to see because they release these things everywhere, and they end up everywhere. Everywhere. They end up in the Detroit River. They end up in Lake Erie. They end up in Lake St. Clair. Obviously, they end up behind the shop. Uh, and there's like a season for – I mean, they just hang out wherever, whenever. Last year, there were some here in July. This year, this year they kind of left around like June. It, they're just strange. But like all the small ones are still around. Like I still see the small ones in the river surfacing, uh, chasing like the tiny minnows and small bait. Like it just – it's nuts. And when you're catching them, there's no rhyme or reason. Like, you can, you are not putting a pattern together for an Atlantic. No. You might catch one in, se like, 70 mm -hmm. feet of water. You might catch one in 14 feet of water. They're very, they're, from what I've from what I've figured out, what I've kind of noticed is they're very picky. They're very, yeah. um, they're very selective on what they eat. They're selective on the bait. Not just the color. Not even, I mean, the color is definitely part of it. But more specifically, the size and the speed and all that stuff. They're just a really weird fish. Cause it seems like when we target the Atlantics, we'll catch the Atlantics and we'll catch like a few cohos here and there, but we'll catch the Atlantics. But when we like target the cohos and the steelhead, rarely do you catch an Atlantic. Yeah. Like you have to put a lure out there or a bait out there. If this one goes off, it's going to be an Atlantic. And usually it is. Usually it's a small bait, something that's aggressive. Yep. And yep. That they're going to, they usually eat it. But if it's, if it's a bigger bait, like even like regular size spoons, they're, they're not the biggest fans of, at least around here. Yeah, I mean, I think we caught two last year on regular size spoons, and right. they did not hit it very well. No, it was like barely hooked. Right, it was like, eh, maybe I'll hit it. 
Yeah, it was it was, but like the small spoons, they'd have all three trebles in their mouth. They're like, oh when my we were god. running those money badgers, like dude, the whole money badgers in their mouth. And it was like, oh my god, they just ate the whole crankbait. Yeah, it's like they want the smallest minnow in the entire school, no doubt, no doubt. So running out of time here this week, we got a little bit shorter of an episode, guys. We want to thank you for tuning in, Louie. It's good to have you back here. Yeah, it was nice to be back after a two or three week break. I know. I don't know if I'm the ugly one or what, but like I had some customers come into the bait shop and they're like, where's Louie been on the last two podcasts? Like you got YouTube and now there's no Louie. It's like, all right, that's fine. Man favorite, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I guess. So catches all the big fish. I don't know about all of them. Well, just a big fish. It was a nice one. It was a nice one. So the 40 inch Laker, man, that was definitely the highlight. Uh, we definitely really wanted to highlight Lake Huron, highlight our home waters a little bit, put some respect on its name. Um, definitely stay tuned because we're going to be heading back out there like as soon as possible. Um, but in the meantime, we've got a lot of other stuff to work on. Obviously, tune in next week. Hopefully, we've got that Lake St. Clair show lined up for you. If not, I'm going to look like an idiot. <laughs> no, it'll be lined up. I'll but, get Joe on the phone. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get Louie on it. The yeah. enforcer. Yeah, I'll be putting up pie. I don't know what I was about to say. Whoa. Sheesh. On that note, guys, please, Louie, tell them what they got to do. Like, share, and subscribe. It's super easy, guys. Right below this video, there's a button that says subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that little bell to get the notifications. We'll let you know when we're coming back out. Check out our Shop Talk videos over on the other side of YouTube. Um, they're just on a separate playlist. We're going to talk a little bit about all the common questions that come in here. Uh, and other than that, y'all, please keep letting us know what you want to hear from. Shoot us a message, a uh, direct message, or the DMs, as the kids call it nowadays. Yeah, you can DM me on Instagram. You know what's messed up? I'm going to go off topic here. I'm not even old. I'm 27. I'm not even old. <laughs> I'm, go, young. Dude. I'm young. I'm <laughs> young. And, like, the generation gap is disgusting between us two. And, like, the things he says and the things he doesn't even know about that I thought were common knowledge. I just, it cracks me up. So slide into the DMS. Yeah. Shoot me a, <laughs> shoot me a DM on Instagram at Captain Louie Erickson. Ask yep. him for his waypoints. He'll give and... me up. Um, <laughs> it's not going to happen, but yeah, like share and subscribe guys. This is getting out of hand. We will see you all next week. Tight lines. Tight lines.